We've all had them. Paper cuts, bee stings. At first glance, they seem too trivial to be mentioned in a conversation about the most painful ways to die, but don't underestimate them. Paper cuts are often so small, they feel like an afterthought. But once the sting sets in, you can't ignore it. Your skin's pain receptors are overloaded, and though the cut is minimal, the nerve signals it sends are sharp and immediate. It's a fleeting pain, but it's there, intense for its size. Bee stings, similar in their immediacy, inject venom into your skin. For some, the initial puncture is a sharp bite, but then the venom spreads, a fire that burns under the surface. The pain shoots through your body, radiating outwards, lasting longer than the bee itself. It's enough to make you freeze in the moment, wondering how something so small could hurt so much. But this is only the beginning. This is where we get a taste of real pain. A threshold that won't let us go, but leaves us wishing for more time before the next level hits. Imagine breaking a bone. You feel the snap, the immediate trauma, the deep pain. It shoots from the fractured bone to the rest of the body, pulsing with every heartbeat. It's not just an ache, but a scream from within you. The fracture site throbs with an intensity that feels unbearable, forcing you to stay still, paralyzed by the sheer force of it. But that's just the first wave. Bone fractures, especially compound fractures, can also damage surrounding tissue, nerves, and blood vessels. In more severe cases, the body goes into shock, the pain distorting your ability to think clearly. It's the type of pain that takes control of you, disorienting you, making you focus entirely on the injury. And in some cases, that pain can linger, becoming a part of you for months, even years. But burns? Burns are a whole different beast. The skin, your largest organ, is home to millions of nerve endings, all of which are directly affected when the skin is burned. First-degree burns might be bearable, but second- and third-degree burns? They are another world. The fire sears through layers of skin, leaving them charred, blackened, or white. The damage goes deeper than just the skin. Nerve endings die, leaving behind pain that doesn't stop, a constant reminder of your vulnerability. Third-degree burns are different still. They burn away the nerves, which means the pain might not be felt at first. But the agony comes when the skin and muscles start to heal. And even worse, the infection sets in. The pain continues for weeks, months, and even years as scar tissue forms, turning your body into a living reminder of the fire's fury. Now, let's get to the next level, where pain becomes something so intense, so overwhelming, that it pushes you to the very edge of human endurance. Kidney stones are one of the most excruciating conditions you can imagine. It starts when sharp crystals, often smaller than a grain of rice, begin to form inside your kidneys. They slowly grow until they reach a size that forces them to pass through the urinary tract. As they move, they scrape against the delicate tissue of the ureters, causing deep, stabbing pain. Each movement is like a blade tearing through your insides. The pain is relentless, sharp, and unforgiving, bringing even the most stoic individuals to their knees. It can last for hours, days, or even longer, depending on the size of the stone and the body's ability to pass it. Then, there's childbirth, the miracle of life, they say. But for many women, the pain of childbirth is something they would never wish to relive. Childbirth pain is multifaceted. It's not just the pain of the contractions, which come in waves, each one more intense than the last. It's the pressure as the baby moves through the birth canal, pressing against bones and muscles, causing what feels like an entire body being pushed to its limit. The intensity can increase for hours with little relief between contractions. It's physical exhaustion mixed with intense discomfort. And after hours of this, a mother finally gives birth, but not without enduring trauma to her body, often leaving her in pain long after the baby is born. But childbirth, despite its agony, is survivable. And while kidney stones may feel like the end of the world for a time, they too pass. The real question comes when we start to enter the territory of the truly life-altering pain, the pain that doesn't stop. Now we're entering a territory few people survive, but those who do experience a pain that not only changes your body, but alters your very understanding of what the human body can endure. Third-degree burns burn deeper than the skin. They burn the fat, muscle, and even bone. 
But even before the charred skin becomes the flesh of nightmares, there's the pain of the burn itself, the immediate agony of fire meeting flesh. The heat is almost unbearable, and for the victim, there's no escaping the relentless torment. But what's worse is the aftermath. In some ways, it's a death before death. First, the nerves in the burned areas die, meaning the initial pain may subside. But that doesn't mean it's over. The healing process is a pain of its own. As your body begins the slow process of recovery, skin grafts become necessary. The body fights infection while you endure constant pressure from bandages and medical procedures. The agony doesn't stop for weeks, months, even years, as your body's wounds slowly heal and the scars remain as painful reminders of the fire's rage. And then there's pain that doesn't come from an injury, but from within. Cluster headaches are so severe that they've earned the nickname Suicide Headaches. If you've never had one, it's hard to imagine how something so small can generate so much pain. A cluster headache begins as a stabbing, sharp pain behind the eye. It doesn't just sit there, it pulses, throbs, radiates throughout the face, jaw, and neck. The pain is so intense that victims are often driven to tears, screaming, or even self-harm. But what's even worse is the unpredictability. These headaches come in clusters, episodes that last for weeks or months, often occurring multiple times a day, for several days in a row. The pain is cyclical, building to a peak and then fading, only to return again with a vengeance. The constant nature of the pain, combined with its excruciating intensity, leads many sufferers to feel as though they're on the edge of losing their minds. The psychological toll is immense, as sleep deprivation, isolation, and the constant fear of the next attack wear down even the toughest individuals. Some go so far as to contemplate suicide just to escape the unrelenting torment. For those who suffer, cluster headaches rank among the worst pains known to humanity. Shingles begins as a whisper but quickly escalates into a roar of pain. Caused by the reactivation of the varicella zoster virus, the same virus responsible for chickenpox, Shingles first shows up as a burning sensation along the skin. It starts as a mild tingling, an almost imperceptible irritation, but that soon transforms into something more brutal. As the virus travels along the nerves, the pain grows sharper, more intense, until it feels like someone is repeatedly pressing a red-hot iron to your skin. It's not just a superficial pain either, it digs deeper. It's as if your nerves themselves are on fire, the affected area often appears as a red rash with fluid-filled blisters, but the true agony comes from the nerve damage. What makes shingles so uniquely brutal, however, is the lingering aftermath. Even when the rash fades, many sufferers experience post-herpetic neuralgia (PHN), where the pain persists long after the rash has healed. The pain can continue for months or even years, long after the blisters have scabbed over and the body has healed. For some, the pain becomes so constant and severe that it leads to a decreased quality of life, resulting in depression, anxiety, and social isolation. The mental toll is just as profound as the physical, and the constant reminder that the pain can strike again at any moment is unbearable for many. It's a pain that not only leaves scars on the skin, but on the soul as well. Tooth abscesses might start as a dull ache, something you could easily ignore. But when the infection takes root in the tooth's pulp, it turns into something much worse. The pain is often described as sharp and intense, throbbing deep in the tooth and radiating to the jaw, neck, and even the ear. At first, the pain is manageable, but as the infection worsens, it feels as if the tooth is being slowly crushed in a vice. Chewing becomes excruciating. Even drinking or breathing can trigger sharp pain. The pressure builds inside the tooth, causing the pain to intensify and spread, often reaching the point where the entire side of the face swells up, sometimes accompanied by a fever. The worst part? It doesn't just hurt, it can affect your entire system. A tooth abscess can lead to a systemic infection, causing fever, malaise, and fatigue, as the bacteria move beyond the tooth itself. If left untreated, the infection can spread to the bloodstream, leading to sepsis, which can be fatal. But even with treatment, the agony doesn't always end right away. For some, the after-effects of the abscess, the residual pain, the sensitivity, and the need for follow-up treatments can linger, keeping the victim in a constant state of discomfort. 
It's a slow, relentless torment that takes its toll on both the body and mind. Migraine headaches are often described as one of the most intense pains known to humans, and it's easy to see why. What starts as a subtle throb on one side of the head quickly escalates into a blinding, pulsing pain that is all-encompassing. It's not just a headache, it's a full-body assault. For those unlucky enough to experience migraines regularly, they can quickly become a debilitating condition that strips away any sense of normalcy. The pain is severe, often accompanied by nausea, vomiting, and a profound sensitivity to light and sound. Even the faintest noise becomes amplified into something deafening, and any exposure to light feels like daggers piercing the skull. Migraines are often associated with an aura, a visual disturbance where sufferers see flashes of light or blind spots before the pain hits, though this is not always the case. What sets migraines apart from ordinary headaches is how they hijack your entire life. A severe migraine can last for hours, even days, and it can become so debilitating that even routine tasks become impossible. Eating, working, talking, everything is affected. It's a pain that never truly ends because the threat of the next migraine always looms. For chronic sufferers, this ongoing battle with excruciating pain can lead to depression and social withdrawal, creating a cycle that seems endless. The agony of a migraine doesn't just affect the body, it reshapes the way people live. Tetanus is one of the most agonizing conditions one can experience. It begins with a simple wound, often a cut, puncture, or scrape, but what follows is far from simple. The bacteria responsible for tetanus, Clostridium tetani, releases a toxin that affects the nervous system, causing muscles to contract uncontrollably. The first sign of tetanus is usually a stiffness in the jaw, often referred to as lockjaw, making it difficult to open the mouth or swallow. As the toxin spreads through the body, it causes more muscle contractions, progressively locking up the entire body. The pain that accompanies these spasms is excruciating. It feels as if the body itself is being forced into an unyielding, painful contortion. The spasms can last for minutes at a time and are so intense that they can cause broken bones or respiratory failure. The agony of tetanus is not just physical, it's psychological as well. Sufferers feel trapped within their own bodies, unable to move or speak, their muscles locked in a constant state of tension. And because the pain is often accompanied by fever and difficulty breathing, the experience can feel like a slow, torturous death. Without prompt medical treatment, tetanus can lead to death. Even with treatment, the recovery is long and painful, and many survivors are left with lasting muscle weakness and nerve damage. It's a pain that immobilizes not just the body, but the very will to live. Amputation is an extreme kind of pain, one that is both physical and emotional. The immediate pain of the injury that necessitates the amputation can be severe, especially if it results from trauma, like an accident or a severe burn. But the real agony sets in after the loss, the psychological pain of losing a part of yourself. The physical pain is intense in the aftermath of the surgery. The wound site itself hurts, but there's something else. The phantom limb pain. Even after a limb is removed, the brain continues to send signals to the nerves that once served that part of the body. This can result in sensations of pain, itching, or discomfort in the missing limb, as though it were still there. This pain can feel as real and as intense as any physical pain, and it's a cruel reminder that the body is no longer the same. The emotional toll of amputation is often just as brutal. The loss of a limb changes everything. It impacts mobility, self-image, and even identity. The agony is not just physical, but psychological as well, as the individual must now live with a permanent change to their body. The pain of amputation can continue long after the wound has healed, as the individual adjusts to their new reality. It's a constant reminder of a life altered forever, with both physical and mental scars that may never fully heal.